Yo, what is up guys? I'm bringing you a brand new video and this time we're talking about the crystal builds that I recommend for low-end player all the way up to a high-end player. And I'm going to talk about the differences between how to build in large scale, 1v1s, evasion, DR, high-end PvE. We're going to take you all the way through it. And basically, I'm going to have this BDO planner linked in the description of this video if you want to follow along and see what these crystals are. But essentially, this is going to be our low-end PvE builds. This is going to be our high-end PvE builds. We then have 1v1 for DR and large scale for DR, followed by 1v1 for evasion and large scale for evasion. So let's start off with what I choose and I'll give you a little bit of justification as to why I choose the following crystals. So starting out with the low end builds, you don't need to have this gear to start building crystals. I think that once you have full pen to Vala that these crystals are appropriate. Essentially, you're going to start off with some dark red fang crystals in your armor slot. These are really good crystals that give 7 damage reduction as well as 2% to all resistances. But it's really that DR, 14 total DR with both of these crystals is going to help you at Star's End and Histria. And it's going to make you a lot tankier with only 10 armors. Moving on to gloves, we got the dark red fang Valors. Those are going to give you some extra critical hit as well as some AP and that's going to help a lot in terms of your damage. And these are only about 30 mil each, and so are the ones in the chest piece. These crystals are only about a mil each, and they give critical hit damage 10%, which is really, really nice for PvE. It's going to help a lot with your damage. As well as these are only about 7 mil for the both of these, and uh, they give you hidden AP plus 5 for each crystal. In your boots, I recommend to have some Adamantines Nature. These give Knockdown Bound 25% and only cost about 3.5 mil each, so 7 mil for the two of them. And they're going to help you survive if you get knocked down at some of these spots, because typically it's the CCs that are going to kill you, especially if you're grinding in a place like maybe Sakraya. Uh, moving right on to Griffin's Helmet. Now for here, generally you're going to want to reach like level 62 or 63 to get your final passives on a class. And so if you're just starting the game, you're probably nowhere near there. And you're going to want to get that faster by getting some extra combat XP, 10%. So that's what I recommend for the helmet. So let's move on to a high-end PvE build. This is for a player that only cares about PvE and nothing else. In the armors, we still got the Dark Red Fangs. Super, super good for tankiness. We still have the Dark Red Fang Valors. These are super good for the offensive. We've now upgraded to Corrupted Crystals which are about 110 mil each, or potentially more depending on what server you're on, but they're going to give an extra 2% crit damage as well as some hidden AP. For your main hand, we've upgraded to Karmaze. They still have the hidden AP, but now include critical hit and some attack speed bonuses. And for the Ergon shoes, we have gone with Macalods, and in the helmet, we have gone with Macalods. The Macalods are great for PvE because they give stamina, they also give some extra combat XP, and just generally are well statted for a lot of classes. If you do want more tankiness and you don't necessarily need that stamina or combat XP, you can swap these out for 4 piece Hoom, which will give you a lot of nice stats to help you with your tankiness. So that is a consideration as well. Now let's move on to the high end damage reduction PvP build. In this particular build, we've got Gin Vipers for the accuracy, we've got the Corrupteds for the damage, we've got Elkars because they have Ignore Resistance on them, which is really, really effective for trying to get your CCs to actually land on your opponents. In the boots, we have gone with some RBF Adamantines. Having Knockdown Bound Resist is amazing because it can help you stand up from a combo if the class you're fighting manages to not go th through with their CC. And in the helmet, we've got some Hand Hooms, which pair nicely with our dandy that also has some hooms. If you don't yet have a Garmoth for your dandy, you can also sacrifice the KD resist and go and put the two hooms here. But generally, by the time your gear looks like this, you probably should be working on a Garmoth. Now, working towards the uh, large scale build, the only real difference here is that in large scale, I recommend damage reduction. You're not really going to be doing damage trading like you are in 1v1s. And so I don't think that the Hooms are appropriate, which is why I go for Harfias. Those give extra damage to humans. In your boots, you also have extra damage to humans. And then in your dandy, you have a Lucas's, which give you damage to, hum damage to humans. Main hand, you keep the Elkars, you keep the Corrupteds, you keep the Vipers. And then in the chest piece, we have Magic Crystal of Affinity, Special Evasion, which is pretty much a staple for all PvP builds. 
Uh, you're definitely going to want to have it in the build above as well. It is pretty much a non-negotiable crystal, which you also keep for both of your evasion PvP builds. So for evasion PvP, it's a little different. This is for 1v1. You're going to keep your Gin Vipers. You can go with the Corrupted Crystals, or you could also go for some of the Rebellious Crystals, and that is going to help your tankiness because it gives an extra uh, 300 plus HP, 350 HP. So that is something to consider in 1v1s. If you are able to actually survive a combo, these can help out with that. Uh, but in the Dandy, we've got the Hooms, of course. In the Boots, we've also got the Hooms. And in the Helmet, we've got the Harfias to get 40 extra evasion. And so essentially, the idea for the 1v1 build is to get yourself as tanky as physically possible and, you know, trying to make yourself able to survive that combo and sacrificing the AP in order to try to do that. Now, moving right along to the large scale build, it's really tough to survive in large scale with any gear. And so that is why you go as pretty much as full damage as you can. That's going to include human damage in your main hand. And I put RBF Adamantians because it can be really nice to avoid that extra KD if there's a hole in one of your abilities where maybe it's not protected or if you get hit by a meteor. Really, really useful. And then, of course, Corrupteds for the damage, Jins for the damage, Elkars for the Ignore Res, uh, Special Attack Evasions, and then the Harfias for your tankiness. That is basically what I recommend. So just to reiterate, we've got the low-end PvE builds, high-end PvE builds. We've got the high-end 1v1 PvP for DR, the high-end large-scale for DR, 1v1 evasion, large-scale evasion. I'm going to link this in the description so you guys can see the different crystals. Um, but essentially, in terms of price, this is about 150 mil. This is under a billion silver to get all of this. I'd say it's maybe around 700 mil. This is going to run you over a billion no matter what crystals you're running here. And a lot of that has to do with just the Gin Vipers and the Gin Harfias and things like that. So they start to get pretty expensive in crystal territory once you're around that gear. But the stats are definitely worth it. But yeah, that is about it, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit 10,000, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.